Reports indicate that the line that received the most thunderous applause was when Trump said, quote, we are committed to protecting innocent civilians from the threat of radical Islamic terrorism. Hold on, since when has criticizing radical Islamic terror become a bad thing? Why is that a bad thing? These people who carry out these terror attacks, they're not praying to the spaghetti monster before they blow themselves up in a marketplace. They're not reciting the Jedi code before they behead someone. Every time they carry out one of these attacks, they say they're doing it for Islam. Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to another edition of the Sham Sharma Show. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. You know, there genuinely used to be a point where the Young Turks used to be a proper progressive platform and they talked about liberal values. But now, essentially, the Young Turks have turned into a platform for shilling for the establishment Democrats and basically repeating Islamist talking points. And you might say to me, Sham, that's a bit harsh, mate, but it's really not. And this video that the Young Turks made with Anna Kasparian, it's a perfect example of that disease. It's a masterclass in cherry picking, masterclass in hiding key information, and a masterclass in how to unfairly malign an entire country and an entire people. I mean, the show is called No Filter with Anna Kasparian, but it really should be called No Evidence with Anna Kasparian. All right, let's just watch the video. The chief minister of Gujarat at the time was India's current prime minister, Narendra Modi. As a hard right Hindu nationalist from the BJP, he has been accused of being complicit in the riots as well as condoning the violence. How is Modi hard right? How is Modi complicit in the riots? Where's the proof? Modi has been exonerated by the Supreme Court of India, the highest law of the land, and also by various special investigative teams that were set up by the Congress party, which is the rival party of Modi, which hates Modi. Even the special investigative team set up by them found no evidence of wrongdoing on Modi's part. This is an important detail. Why leave out this part? Why spread false rumors? If we're all just spreading false rumors, then let me jump in on it too. Let me spread a rumor too. I say that Cenk Uyghur of the Young Turks rubs himself with bacon grease before every show. Now, I don't really have any proof for it, but neither do you for the claims that you're making. I heard Steven Crowder say something about Cenk Uyghur and bacon grease one time, so sure. Remember kids, Cenk Uyghur rubs himself with bacon grease before every show. Modi had justified the violence against innocent Muslims as retaliation for an earlier tragic train fire that killed 59 Hindu pilgrims who were returning to Gujarat. The pilgrims were activists in the World Hindu Council who had defied court orders that were meant to prevent them from building a temple on the ruins of a 16th century mosque. Tragic train fire? Really? Was 9-11 a tragic building fire? Was the terrorist attacks in Paris a tragic gun malfunction? Oh my god, I don't want to shoot these people, but this gun just keeps firing on itself. Over 30 people have been convicted by the court for a pre-planned conspiracy to burn that train and murder 59 Hindus. Why leave that out? Why not mention the fact that over 30 people have been convicted in the murder of those Hindus. And then in the video, she goes on to malign the Hindu pilgrims that died as well, as if somehow they deserved what happened to them. This is what the liberal media in India was doing as well. It was trying to blame the people that died, that somehow they deserved what happened to them. Now, Hindu nationalists like Modi placed the blame on that train fire squarely on the Muslim community. But as the New York Times reported, an Indian government investigation found that the fire was actually an accident and not caused by Muslims. The whole claim that this train was an accident is an old conspiracy theory and it was a political hit job. Even the article that Anna shares is from 2005. This was a political hit job where the Banerjee panel was formed and they came out with some foregone conclusions without even properly investigating the fire. And this was passed around by the liberal media and Modi's political opponents as the gospel truth. Do you know how I know 
how the Banerjee panel was a political hit job and was a complete shambles. No, don't worry, I'm not gonna talk out my ass like the Young Turks. I know because this is what the court who investigated the panel said as well. The High Court deemed the Banerjee panel to be illegal. The High Court in October 2006 discarded the findings of the Banerjee panel report and ruled that the probe was unconstitutional, illegal and null and void. Justice D.N. Patel of the Gujarat High Court had declared the formation of panel to be a colorable exercise of power with malified intentions and its arguments of accidental fire opposed to the prima facie accepted facts on record. Why leave this out, Anna? Why are you always lying? Don't you think this is an important piece of information to tell your audience? Why share old news that has been debunked by the findings of the courts? And not just this, there are other important pieces of information that Anna fails to mention in her video as well. Like, in 2011, a special investigative tribunal had convicted 31 persons related to the case of conspiracy to burn down the train. A special court had again in 2018 sentenced two more accused, Farooq Bhana and Imran, alias Sheru Batuk, to life imprisonment in relation to the case of burning the Sabarmati Express train in 2002. A special investigative court in Ahmedabad convicted Yakub Patalia in 2018 and sentenced him to life imprisonment as well with relation to the 2002 Godra train burning case. It is also reported that on the eve of the incident, Farooq Bhana had held a meeting at the Aman guest house to incite people to burn down S6 coach of the Sabarmati Express. So this was clearly a pre-planned terror attack. This was not a tragic train fire. And this is how the leftist media has treated the 59 people who died in Godra. Do you know the name of a single victim that died in Godra? They are forgotten. They've been reduced to statistics, just like the victims of all other riots in India as well. Only the victims of the Gujarat riots are remembered. We have forgotten everyone else. Seriously, Hindu lives could not matter any less for these people. But even if the outcome of that investigation provided some evidence that a few religiously Muslim individuals did start that deadly fire, there was absolutely no justification for what happened next to innocent Muslims in Gujarat. No, it does not justify what happened to the Muslims in Gujarat. It does not. But it is also very important to provide context. If you're a serious news organization, it is your job to provide context. It is your job to provide the entire story. And also for some reason, again, we only, only ever speak about the 2002 riots. There have literally been hundreds and hundreds of riots since India's independence all across India. But we never ever talk about those riots. We never ever hold a public trial of the leaders of the states in which those other riots took place. We've only ever done a public trial of Modi. Now, sure, investigation should have been done, but why don't we investigate the other riots and the other leaders the way we investigated Modi? Why are the Young Turks still spreading false rumors and fake news about Modi even after he was exonerated by the Supreme Court of India? Why are they still trying to spread these untrue rumors about him? It's almost like the Young Turks are dishonest people. Hmm. Just this past weekend, Modi visited the United States and held an event called Howdy Modi with Donald Trump in Houston. Reports indicate that the line that received the most thunderous applause was when Trump said, quote, we are committed to protecting innocent civilians from the threat of radical Islamic terrorism. Hold on, since when has criticizing radical Islamic terror become a bad thing? Why is that a bad thing? These people who carry out these terror attacks, they're not praying to the spaghetti monster before they blow themselves up in a marketplace. They're not reciting the Jedi code before they behead someone. Every time they carry out one of these attacks, they say they're doing it for Islam. Are the Democrats and their lackeys really that desperate to lose the 2020 elections that now even criticizing radical Islamic terror is such a problematic thing? But what gets little critique is the fact that a Democratic presidential candidate who presents herself as progressive is a huge supporter of Modi's. In fact, Tulsi Gabbard is the only Democrat in Congress who claimed it was a great blunder 
when U.S. lawmakers denied Modi a visa following the Gujarat riots. Yes, I also think it was a blunder because there was a lot of false information going out about Modi about the Gujarat riots. There was an investigation going on, an investigation which found him to be exonerated of all the charges that was made against him. So why jump the gun and revoke Modi's visa? And also, like I said before, hundreds of riots have happened in other Indian states as well, where non-BJP political parties have presided over those riots. Why not revoke their visas? Why not revoke visas of members of the Congress party? Why only go after Modi? And while we're talking about revoking visas, us, let's take another example. Countries like Pakistan and countries like Saudi Arabia have been actively involved in supporting terrorism throughout the world. The support that these two countries provide to terror organization has been directly responsible for the deaths of American soldiers and American citizens. Why only Modi? That is why I believe that it was a mistake to revoke Modi's visa. They jumped the gun and that's what Tulsi said and I agree with her. Even though Modi has been vicious in his dehumanization of India's Muslim minority, Gabbard proponents argue that she's just the peace candidate who's trying to maintain diplomatic ties. Again, this is a very broad sweeping statement with not a lot of evidence behind it. So if they're making broad sweeping statements with no evidence behind it, then I'm also going to make some broad sweeping statements with no real evidence behind it. Cenk Uyghur rubs himself with bacon grease before every episode of the Young Turks. And how is he dehumanizing Muslims? Muslim women and Shias in Kashmir now have equal rights after the removal of Article 370. Their dignity has been restored in Kashmir. The Modi government also banned the practice of triple talaq in India, which is a practice that destroyed millions millions and millions of Muslim women's lives in the past. And now those women have also gotten their dignity back. Is this dehumanization? Providing health care to millions of Muslims, providing banking facilities and financial inclusion to millions of Muslims, providing clean water, toilets, basic amenities to millions and millions of Muslims. Is that dehumanizing them? Even with the NRC, something which the critics of the Modi government are talking about, dehumanizing of the Muslims, even the NRC, this is something that was part of the deal between Assam and the Congress government, not the BJP government. The Congress government promised Assam that they would get rid of illegal immigrants. The BJP is just trying to fulfill the promise that the Congress government made to the Assamese people. In fact, Gabbard justified Modi's decision to strip Kashmir of its autonomous status which is a strange move coming from someone like Gabbard who claims that she just wants peace because Modi's decision is likely to further destabilize that region. What did you just say? Kashmir. Kashmir? Kashmir. Kashmir? Kashmir. And yes, Tulsi defended the removal of Article 370 because under Article 370, the Muslim Sunni men of Kashmir had special privileges and a large chunk of the Kashmiri population had their fundamental rights taken away from them. After the removal of Article 370, everyone in Kashmir is considered equal under the law. A huge chunk of the Kashmiri population's fundamental rights have been restored. Did you know that last year, homosexuality was decriminalized all across India, but because of Article 370, homosexuality would still be a criminal activity in Jammu and Kashmir. Do the Young Turks support the criminalization of the LGBTQ community? Modi's actions have increased the risk of war, including nuclear war between Pakistan and India. How? Modi has taken a constitutional decision on Indian territory, which has massive support from the Indian population. Jammu and Kashmir is Indian territory. Jammu and Kashmir acceded to India in 1947, just like 500 plus other princely states made the same decision to join either India or Pakistan. How? Is that destabilizing? And by the way, talking about nuclear war, India has never threatened nuclear war with any country. India, for the longest time, has had the no first use policy. It is in fact Pakistan that has been threatening India over and over and over again with nuclear war. Only recently, Imran Khan wrote an op-ed, opinion piece, in the New York Times, again threatening a nuclear war on India. So I think that in the face of a country that has continuously been threatening nuclear war with you, India has the right to revisit its no first use policy. Uh, how the previous government had policies in place that uh, made homosexuality illegal, mm -hmm. uh, that suppressed the voices of women that made it. I met a woman uh, a couple of days ago who said that uh, she as a Kashmiri woman had no rights to own property. 
Those were the exact types of justifications our government cited when they decided to invade Muslim majority countries or when they pushed for regime change wars. What? What are you smoking? And can I have some? The US claimed that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and they had no proof of that. They never found weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. But under Article 370, there was legal discrimination against a large section of Kashmiri society enshrined in the constitution of India. That's proof right there. Legal discrimination. Do you understand the distinction between proof and no proof? Proof? No proof. So Kashmir, proof. Iraq, no proof. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? But I'm sure all of these verifiable points will be brushed off as nothing more than supposed smears. Oh really? So let's take a look at what a definition of a smear is. A smear is something that damages the reputation of someone by false accusations and slander. So let's take a look. You provide no proof, you leave out key pieces of information, and you spread outright lies about Modi, India, and Tulsi Gabbard to ruin their reputation. That is the definition of a smear. That is exactly what Anna and the Young Turks are doing to Tulsi, India, and Modi. It's the smeariest of smears, man. Oh, another definition of smear is coat or mark something messily or carelessly with a greasy or sticky substance, which is exactly what Cenk Uyghur does with bacon grease before every show. Thank you. Thank you, I'm proud of that one too, thank you. Look, I don't mean to be rude, and if you watched my previous videos where I've replied to people, where I've debunked certain narratives, I try never to go after people personally. But this video from the Young Turks is clearly mean-spirited. This video from the Young Turks is clearly pushing a certain kind of agenda. This is a channel with huge amounts of funding. This is a channel with millions and millions of subscribers, so they can clearly afford to do proper research. But they're leaving out important pieces of information. They're leaving out key facts. They're calling the murder, the cold-blooded murder of 59 innocent people, a tragic train fire. And they're deliberately spreading this false information to malign an entire country and an entire people. That is absolutely despicable. And if that's the kind of propaganda and that's the kind of shilling for establishment Democrats that the Young Turks want to do, then I hope I really hope that Trump absolutely wipes the floor with these chumps in the 2020 elections. And I want to ask you guys as well, do you think this video from Anna and from the Young Turks is fair? Or do you think it's a biased video that leaves out key pieces of information? Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, please make sure to leave a like, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you want, please let the Young Turks know about this video as well. Tag them, share this video with them, let them see this video and show them the way that they're cherry picking information and leaving out key facts. If you like the Sham Sharma show and you'd like to support the Sham Sharma show, then please make sure to click on the patreon button down below and become a patron subscriber you get tons of exclusive content and you get tons of exclusive polls that you can go and vote for on the patreon page you also get access to the whatsapp and discord servers that are exclusive to patreon members only we have a lot of great conversations there you can talk directly with me and i can talk directly to you guys as well so if you sign up on patreon you get access to the whatsapp and discord servers as well so go ahead and do that if you like today's episode if you like what we do here on the sham sharma show and if you have not subscribed already what are you doing Click on the subscribe button down below. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to press the bell icon as well. And check out all the other videos that we have got going on over here on our channel. You're going to like them. I will see you for the next episode. And until then, stay happy, stay healthy. And I'll see you guys soon.